when you get to a certain age and you start a new relationship, it goes without saying there's a bit of baggage. The scars of past breakups, the obsessive compulsive checking for coffee breath, the children. So when I met Josie and she told me she had a son, I was okay with that. All right, I was terrified of that. <laughs> Knowing that my emotional development ended at 13, I was concerned that I would quickly be shown up by Charlie. Charlie's on the spectrum, Josie told me. Don't tell me, I said, he's red and yellow and pink and green. No, he's on the autistic spectrum, she said, looking worried. Well, if it's a spectrum, we're all on it somewhere, I tried to reassure her. This earned me a massive hug and a kiss with tongues. It was all going to be fine. Now, Charlie was 14 and he'd been on his own with his mum since the age of three. They were indivisible, conjoined, an alloy. It was lovely, but a pretty exclusive club as far as Charlie was concerned. When we met, he looked at me with suspicion. When I first stayed over, Charlie pooed in my trainers. <laughs> when I moved in, Charlie stopped speaking. And for a week, he stopped eating too. It was a pretty tough week. Charlie was isolated, Josie was frantic, and I was the underlying cause. But I tried to win him round without being overtly creepy about wanting to be liked. But most of all, I didn't want what was now quite obviously an L-O-V-E affair to falter on the rocks of an unhappy child. I forgave the hate in Charlie's eyes. It was easy. He was hurting. But that and his mother's worry was hard. And in all of this, Charlie never spoke to me directly. Not once. And that was hardest of all. If I was lucky, I might be referred to in a whiny teenage grump as him. And to avoid speaking to me, even referring to me, Charlie communicated with this, his kazoo. So when I entered the room, he did a, a laughing policeman laugh through the thing to taunt me. <laughs> if I cuddled up with Josie on the sofa, he hummed the tune from Psycho and made stabbing movements with his hands. But it wasn't all bad. Charlie loved his football, playing and watching. And despite his seething resentment of my presence, even Charlie had to acknowledge that I was better for a kick around than his mum. When he wanted me to play football with him, Charlie didn't ask. Oh no, he played me a little coded message. This was okay, acceptance of a sort, and I made sure to let Charlie win almost all of the tackles and score all the best goals. But more than once, Charlie crept into our bedroom, put the kazoo to my ear, and blasted out the tune at 6 a.m. <laughs> I developed a kind of kazoo shell shock and even had to give up Walker's crisps. So one Sunday afternoon, after a long game and a big lunch, Charlie sparked out on the sofa. Josie, in contrast, was wonderfully frisky and started to bite my neck knowing what that did to me. We kissed like teenagers in front of sleeping grandparents, then crept upstairs for a special cuddle. In the bedroom, Josie tore up my shirt and I ripped off her jeans. It felt illicit. And like most illicit things, the effect was amplified as a result. There was so much passion, we were on fire. And in the moment, as we were, neither of us had noticed Charlie sneak into the room until he played this tune. Get out, I shouted and chased Charlie down the stairs. I didn't stop to put any clothes on, so I slipped, banged my head, and bounced my head down the last few stairs. On the landing, as I lay there, moaning with the pain and certain I'd never have sex again, Charlie opened the front door to the street, stood behind it, and played this. <laughs> Mrs. Jones from number 23 hasn't looked me in the eye since. There were just two more tunes of significance. 
The first, when I noticed Charlie had bruises on his arms and he was very reluctant to show them to me or his mum. After weeks of drawing a blank, I followed him to school and saw he was ambushed by two lads bigger and nastier than he was. As they dragged Charlie to the floor and took his dinner money, I flipped. I could have been arrested, but I became so much of a nutter, I think the bullies dared report him. I ran across the road, dragged each of the boys by the back of their school blazers and held them up against the wall. And with language a Liverpool docker would have been ashamed of, I threatened to do serious harm if they ever messed with Charlie again. I said I would be watching. I said I knew. And I said, as you do, that I know where they live. It works. And as Charlie and I turned the corner to school, he looked at me with a nod of appreciation. Then he got out his kazoo and played the theme tune from The Great Escape. <laughs> His eyes were laughing. Mine had a piece of dirt in them. Both of them. You understand? That was a breakthrough for us. There were ups and downs to come, of course, and there'll be more, I have no doubt. But about a year later, just last weekend, in fact, Charlie walked his mother down the aisle to meet me. The tune was traditional, but the organist wasn't required, and everyone in the congregation played along. Whee!